SRB set. SRB. Uh, People in major uh, cities like Washington, SRB Philadelphia, is, New York, uh, away looking from eastward the, uh, may even see it going north. Uh, the highest degree of inclination to the equator any shuttle launch has ever been, 57 degrees. Columbia Houston, first stage performance, nominal. That's the word they want to hear, nominal. Everything is just fine. Down. Velocity 48. Okay, let's take another look at it. You are about to see, once again, the launch of Columbia and the Space Lab. First return to space in more than a year for this orbiter. Solid motor ignition. Columbia and the first flight of the European Space Agency Space Lab. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Roger, roll. And NASA is very proud, not only NASA, but the European Space Agency, otherwise known as ESA, sort of NASA's European counterpart. This is the beginning of international scientific cooperation in space. A billion dollar package riding in the back of Columbia right now. Well, all is going well with a little more than three minutes into this mission, and our coverage of the Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in a moment. Solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia. The 2,251 ton shuttle's three main engines and two solid boosters roared up from Cape Canaveral at 11 o'clock this morning, right on time. The refurbished Columbia is carrying a crew of six, that's the most ever put into space at one time, and they'll make 145 orbits of the Earth over the next nine days. That's more than any shuttle mission so far. During that time, the crew will conduct experiments with a $1 billion European-built Space Lab Research Center and provide information for 11 European countries as well as Japan, Canada, and the United States. It was a classic shuttle launch. The pride of the U.S. space fleet thundered its way into Earth orbit carrying a billion-dollar cargo, a scientific laboratory built and paid for by the European Space Agency. So it was truly a space shot heard round the world. Columbia, Houston, your go and throttle up. Beifall im Kontrollzentrum in Florida und in Houston, von wo aus der Flug überwacht wird. Space Lab should have been launched two years ago. Now at last, they're in business. 25 miles out to 26 miles downrange. Roger, SRB set. Hatching their new scientific project, rather unhatching it, was a struggle. For a few tense moments, it appeared lucky that it's a six-man mission. Just about everybody got into the act. The hatch leads to an 18-foot-long tunnel. Welcome to Space Lab. At the other end of that tunnel, the new laboratory. A remote camera caught a special moment as the crew arrive for work on the dozens of experiments located in the Space Lab, which, like the shuttle, is reusable and will be flown again. European Space Agency payload specialist. One of the scientists on board is Ulf Merbold, a West German, the first foreign member of a U.S. crew. For Commander John Young, who drifted in to visit the laboratory, this mission is his sixth trip to space, and he proved he's lost none of his enthusiasm. Especially in view of the billion-dollar package riding out back, the European-built space lab. Three, two, one... Solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia and the first flight of the European Space Agency Space Lab. Columbia returned to space for the first time in more than a year with a bone-rattling roar as it veered off on a new route north along the east coast on a space-based Route 1, shedding its spent solid rocket boosters in the ocean due east of Jacksonville. NASA took such pride in its ninth liftoff, they used up all the superlatives. When it gets off the ground successfully, we call it perfect. <laughs> uh, I don't know how it could get much better either, really. It's, it's, it was superb. For the six crew members riding inside, the largest ever launched, the technical success of the start of their nine-day mission wasn't the only superb part, not even for Commander John Young, who treated his sixth trip into space as if it were his first. This is so neat up here, John. You just can't believe it. It is really something. The first TV pictures from space showed the lab in the cargo bay. And it took some extra elbow grease from the crew wearing biomedical sensors to get the entry hatch opened. You ought to be able to see us all working like dogs to do this thing. But when they removed it, they floated right into the connecting tunnel. And then, at last, into Space Lab itself. 
For scientists Byron Lichtenberg, Owen Garriott, and Ulf Mirbold, it was the moment they'd been waiting and training for these past five years. There are more than 70 experiments on this mission to study the sun, the stars, the Earth, even the crew members' own bodies. But the real experiment is the space lab itself to prove it can work as a platform for future research in space to benefit humans on Earth. Lynn Scher, ABC News, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There had been concern that showers might delay the launch, but the weather remained good. Commander John Young and the other five crew members made up the largest group ever to go into space. On the launch pad, there were no major problems, and liftoff occurred right on schedule. We have main engine start, three, two, one, solid motor ignition, and liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia and the first flight of the European Space Agency Space Lab. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Roger, roll. This was the view from a NASA plane showing the shuttle ascending over the coastline of Central Florida. Northeast. Roger. It's just super up there, just beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, flying machine and it just got up there just like uh, everybody said it would. The solid fuel rocket boosters separated as planned. One of these rockets had to be replaced because of concern about some insulating material. But there were apparently no problems today. NASA said it was the smoothest shuttle launch yet. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Cape Canaveral.